Hello everyone, it's Scott here and in this lesson we are going to be setting up our player as a prefab so that we can then use our player in them um, or we're setting it up so it can be used um, for the for the game. So like I said because this is a prototype it's we're going to be doing everything um, pretty much using um, primitive shapes kind of um, it's called grey boxing and it's a very um, popular technique in game development for quickly prototyping out games and game levels. So as as a as a programmer, as a designer, you're making your, your prototype, you will then have artists who are uh, creating the, the character artwork. So as you're making your prototype, you're just using uh, cubes and so on. And then whenever you've maybe finished your prototype, then you will have a finished character as well. So for the time being, we will just be using uh, simple props, okay, or simple objects. So I'm going to hit uh, create object, create other, and we're going to choose a cube. And I'm just going to move this up onto the game level, like so. And we're just going to keep it at the default um, one by one by one. I'm going to center it, zero, zero, zero. And then I'm going to hold down the V key, and I'm just going to make sure that he is on the floor. It's really important that he is on the floor. And just make sure again the X position is zero. The Y position is the up value, so we're not going to change that. 0.5 is default. And Z, make sure that's zero as well. The the bad thing with Unity is that the pivot point, which is where the little arrows are in the center, those should really be set to the bottom of the object. So that whenever we actually place objects into the game, they are automatically aligned to the floor. Whereas in this, it's um, this is going to be 0 0.5 because the scale is 1. So um, because this is in the half, then half of 1 is 0 0.5. So how do we think of how that works? Um, so that's our player in our game. okay. And then we're going to go to materials. And you should already have the M underscore player created. If not, just right click and create a new material. So this is going to be our player color. So I'm just going to drag that on like so. Okay, so that's something I kind of like. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this to player. And then we're going to, uh, let's have a think. This character is going to work with physics. So if he bumps off objects, um, he'll actually block off walls and he'll be able to hit enemies and so on. So for this, we need to apply uh, physics to this object and very simply this is done through a component so we need to add a new component and these are just kind of like um, effects or additional properties with with game objects so we're going to go to physics and we're going to choose something called rigid body this means that he will have a body of physics kind of um, encompassing the the object so we're going to click on that so now this guy will actually be affected by physics now if we hit play, he may fall through the floor and um, because he's now been affected by gravity. However, because there's no real gravity in this game, we're just going to tick that off. Then there's another option we're going to tick called kinematic. And apart from that, we don't need to set up anything else. Okay. So with that, that's our player pretty much set up. Um, he's called player. Now, he's we're going to be setting this up so that he's going to be traveling down the the Z axis, okay? So you see this blue arrow corresponds to Z. Now what I'm going to do is in the prototype that I've been building on the side, I've been making a little object um, which shows what way the player is actually facing. So what I'm going to do is with my player selected, I'm just going to go to edit and duplicate. And with that duplicate, I'm just going to pull that out. And I'm going to call this uh, weapon or face or whatever. So I'm just going to call that weapon, and I'm going to scale it, uh, point, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, maybe 0.4. This is just to say exactly where the player will be facing. And I might just put in like that, okay? It doesn't matter that it's going to cross um, hitting that, okay? Then I'm going to go to my M underscore gun and just drag that in. So it's just, again, it's just a color. I might actually change it to a red. And then we're, what we're going to do is 
wherever the player moves we need to make sure the weapon follows so we're going to click and drag on weapon and, s and drag that into player so again these hierarchies really important it's going to undo that so he's back at uh, 0, 0 0.5 and 0 the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on weapon and I'm just going to kill this box collider I'm going to right click and remove the component that means that there will be no um, kind of physics or collision associated with this object because it's just a visual representation as opposed to the player which does have a collider around it you can see the the green box and it also has physics applied so the child will kind of inherit some of the properties off this box um, and with that that's our that's our player pretty much set up let me just see if there's anything else we need um, Okay, we're going to now tag this object. Um, so what tags are, it's kind of like a, um, it's mainly used for collisions. So whenever maybe enemies hit objects, it needs to know what kind of object this is. And these are just used called, these are just uh, tags, okay? So we're just gonna uh, set this to player because it's already set up in there. So I'm just gonna hit on player. So this has like a, a group name of player and you'll see why this is more important. Uh, later on in the in the lessons Okay, with that that is pretty much our player setup. Okay, um Like I said, we need to make this as a prefab. So to make a prefab We're just going to uh, drag our player into our project view And that will create this as a prefab so we can spawn loads of these guys in Like so, but well, I'm just going to delete him for the time being Okay that's it on setting up the the player prefab. In the next lesson, we're actually going to be jumping into Uscript. So I hope you look forward to that. Thank you.